Hello, everybody. I wanted to come on a little bit earlier just to make sure that all of my equipment was working. Um, and there's a bit of a delay, so um, it's kind of hard for me to tell what the timing is. It's about a 20 second delay on my part. Um, so I just wanted to come in and check and see how, how things are going. Um, so right now, if I turn off my regular camera, for those of you that came in early, I don't know how long my camera is going to work, and I know some people who are asking me if Glenn was going to be part of this live, so Glenn is my, is my cat, um, and he just woke up from his nap, so he is hanging out across from me where, where I'm going to be setting up. I have a couple of cameras going, going on, so for those of you that wanted to get a quick <laughs> a quick check in on, on Glenn. He's he's hanging out with me. If he gets to be too much, uh, I'll have him leave the room. But for right now, at least he's he's cool, so he can stay. So let me get the camera back on my face here. And I appreciate your patience as I toggle between the screens. So, good evening everybody. Hello and welcome. Um, this is the teacher spotlight that the Wool and Fiber Arts page is putting on to showcase the different fiber art teachers that have um, been affected by the cancellations of fiber festivals and, and shows. And so I'm definitely one of them and I want to thank everybody for working so hard for putting this page together, especially Ellen and all the moderators, everybody working in the behind the scenes um, pages, they're doing a phenomenal job. And I'm just, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to both um, share what I love with you, but also to learn from and help support other fiber artists. So, so thank you for this opportunity. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Alana Wilcox. And um, tonight I'm basically going to go down the, the who, what, where, when, and why about myself. I have a little agenda over here, and I appreciate um, those of you that, that have been following along with all the videos that I've been posting in, in the group, um, sharing a little bit about spinning, weaving, knitting, you know, the things that I love, I love to do. So just as a quick like, rundown of what I'm going to do, first I'll introduce myself and a little bit about who I am. Um, and then the main focus of tonight is that I want to share what exactly um, goes into being a participant of the OHS spinning certificate course. So we'll cover that. And then I'm going to go over the where. So where can you find me? Where can you learn from me? All of that good stuff. Um, the when. Okay. So when will those opportunities be available? And why, why am I doing this? Okay. So to start off with. Um, for the introduction. So basically, again, for those of you that, that don't know me, oh, there's an echo on the audio. My apologies. Um, let me see. I can try switching. Hang on. I just saw the comments. I can, I can take this off and use the, the computers. Hopefully that will help. If not, let me know. And hi, Ellen. So just let me know and I can, I can change the audio back if, if it's not, um, good or I can use my my teacher voice and and project so basically who I am um well I'm a teacher okay so I'm a high school art teacher and I've been teaching I'm going into my 15th year um and so today I found out on Monday that I had to go in and pack up my classroom for the summer and it was kind of bittersweet because you know I love the interaction of working with students and the whole online learning bit i mean it's good but for art you know it's it's leaves much to be desired so that's kind of my my day job if you will um but i'm also a fiber artist i'm also um an author so for those of you that that don't know um i wrote this book here and when the festival goes live over memorial day weekend i'll go into this book a little bit more um and i can show you some of the, the um, garments that i made for it and explain what was the motivation for, for writing it. So I'm an author. And also, um, I'm a master spinner. And so I'll explain to you what that means because it's not um, a self-proclaimed title. It's actually something that I had to work very hard for. 
In fact, I had to do um, six years of intensive study to, to, to gain that, well, just to get the spinning certificate and then to become um, a master spinner was a little bit extra. So yeah, so Christine, it's hard for, for parents, it's hard for teachers, it's hard for, for kids, it's, it's hard for everybody, unfortunately. And, you know, I think we can focus on the negative stuff about it, but I'm one of those people that really thrives on trying to focus on what I do have control over, you know? And so I, I'm very fortunate and grateful that we have the internet, that we have this capability where I can have these opportunities to share what I love with you and you know for hopefully you to get something from it as well but for me i just i love that's that's the why piece i guess at the end but i just i love sharing what i'm passionate about with other people hi raven so um this this spinning certificate that i'm talking about right what, what exactly is it well when i first started um spinning it was because i wanted to spin my cat's fur and there was um a lady that directed me towards a local spinners guild and when I went to the guild, they said that they weren't going to um, spin the cat's fiber for me, instead that they were gonna teach me. So this is like over 15 years ago that this happened. And there was a spinner in the group, Carolyn Ravello, and she became a very good friend of mine. And she went um, to, to participate in the spinning certificate course thing that I don't know how to describe it at the time, um, but it was like this, school that taught you how to be a good spinner and and it covered everything that has to do with spinning and she would show us these homework binders and it it would make me salivate because the idea of spinning and getting better and like having someone give you feedback on it it was just i don't know it was something that really got me excited right and so um, I have my year one binder to show with you, and um, I'll get into that in, in a minute. But basically, over here, I don't know if you can see this lengthy sheet. If you'd like to, to, to get more um, you know, details on it or a closer up look, I can switch to my, to my phone camera. But basically what it entails is teaching people about fiber, like everything that has to do with fiber, okay? So, and again, sorry for the, sorry for the um, 20 second delay that I didn't see that the, the paper wasn't here. Let me see if I can get, okay, so now I can see the other side of the sheet. <laughs> the joys of technology, right? So hopefully you got to see the other side. Um, but basically what it is, it's these, these spinners who are very knowledgeable and proficient in, you know, their, their craft, teaching new people all of the facets of spinning so you go through the fibers um you know from wool to you know kiviat like the full the full gamut um you go through dyeing natural dyeing acid dyeing creative dyeing technical spinning twist angle grist um i'm trying to think like you know it's just it's so much right so you go for about nine days of instruction from like 9 a.m to 4 p.m then you have these homework assignments that you have to mail into your instructors. So you have nine days of instruction, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You get these homework assignments, you go home. Like your, your mind is just completely, you know, filled and overwhelmed and it's crazy. And then you have to do these homework assignments, right? And so um, I'm going to switch my camera so you can see what I'm talking about now. But also, we have Glenn. So for those of you that were asking about my cat, he's still joining us and he's still being cool. <laughs> but over here are my homework assignments. And you can see this is just like one year's worth of homework assignments. So it's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, over here, you can see that you have to label and document everything. So I had to say what was in the yarn, how I spun it, how many wraps are, you know, in a given inch, how many twists are in a given inch of this yarn, what tools did I use, how did I prepare it, and this big one here, okay? So let's see this one, end use. Okay, yep, end use right here. This is the, like, main thing that I got 
from 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 taking this course. So hang on, let me switch back. Okay. So that's like the main thing that I got from this course is you need to have a purpose for why you're spinning. And <laughs> thank you, Mary Lou. I think he's quite adorable too. Um, and the, the reason for that, if you think about it, right? Like I liken spinning to cooking. And so if you go to the store, you know, or even if you go to a restaurant, you can buy spaghetti with tomato sauce and it's already cooked, right? Like you can go to the store and buy a sweater. It's already made. You don't have to make it. But if you like start to get really intrigued and interested about cooking and, and spinning, you know, not or, or yarn or fibers, you, you want to like start at a certain point and, and get better, right? So you might start with sauce and then pasta that you cook. Um, then you might say, okay, I'm going to buy tomatoes and I'm going to make my sauce. And then you might get even, you know, more into it and you might become a farmer and grow your own tomatoes, right? And then now you're like picking specific brands for specific reasons. And so a spinner is the same, you know, like a spinner can go and buy wool that's already dyed and just spin it. They can buy undyed fiber and dye it. They can, you know, go so far as buying a fleece or they can become a shepherd and now they have a flock of sheep, right? So it's the idea that, you know, you can pick where on this fiber art adventure you want to start your journey. And, you know, that, that to me is just amazing. You know, that it's not like someone that's a painter for the most part, like painters don't necessarily mix their own paints. I mean, they might like buy the paint um, and then like mix those pigments, but you know, very rarely do you hear of someone that like, you know, grows the cotton to make the, the fabric of the canvas and like really start from the, the, the scratch point of, of the medium and work all the way through. And that's kind of what this course does. So I'll switch back so I can show you some of the assignments. And if you have any questions or if you would like to see more, you know, components of it, just let me know. Okay. So give me a second to toggle to a different camera. There we go. Okay. So over here um, was one of the first year assignments and you can see I have it so that like year one was the woolen year and we did acid dyes. So I just got to wait to make sure that my camera is good. If not, I'll move it once I see it come back because, like I said, there's a little bit of a lag. But yeah, this was the woolen year. So it was just wool fiber and it was just acid dyes. We didn't do anything, um, you know, as far, as far as like alpaca yet or anything like that. And we couldn't use commercially prepared fiber. Everything was raw and it had to be um, stuff that we washed. So each homework assignment has a title and it had like an instructor that taught it and then we had to include all of this information and then we had to also mount our our yarns so we had to mount the singles that we spun the yarn that we spun from it and then we had to also mount the the fiber so that in instances like now when you're sharing what you've learned with a guild or in a workshop or classes then you'll be able to see what, what the person did and really can see it from, from scratch. So this one was kind of an interesting one um, where we had to do an exercise where we spun our singles clockwise and we also spun our singer, singles counterclockwise and to observe and notice the difference. So this is where, when I was saying in my video on knitting um, and using yarns that untwist, if you, if you find that a yarn twists or untwists in a certain way, it could be how you're wrapping the hook. And it could also be as a spinner, if you like to wrap your hook or your needle around your yarn in a certain way um, that takes twist out, you can conversely spin the yarn in the opposite direction to, to make it so that that doesn't, that doesn't happen. So as far as the materials, Nicole, they provided most of the materials, okay? And when I say most of the materials, there would be exercises like this one where it was a color exercise and so we were mixing two colors together um, without using any tools so no hand carters no you know combs nothing like that and they provided the wool 
um, I had to buy the cardboard, I had to buy the, you know, plastic baggie, all of the display things. And I found in year one, it was sort of like, you know, if you're not a scrapbooker, there's a learning curve. You know, you have to figure out how to mount stuff in such a way. Now they give you instructions, you know, as far as like how many yards you need to mount and what you need to mount as far as like the, the singles, the wool, you know, they say these things have to be mounted, but they kind of leave it up to you to, to decide what's best. So I, I would say after year two was probably when I got the hang of it and, and I was able to figure out what worked for myself. Um, so as far as the meeting times, we would meet one-on-one -on -one in the class setting um, with like classmates. So it was about 20 students and we would meet with the teachers, like I said, for about nine days and we would go from nine in the morning to four at night and then that was it. So all of the notes you took, that's what you had. And I started a Ravelry group so that people that wanted to um, you know, learn more about it and like talk about it, we could, we could share ideas there. And so it's, st it's still up there. So see, this was another color exercise. So because year one was wool and spinning, we also were allowed to use hand carters. So this is the same color that was in this exercise over here, but this is just the, um, the, the yarn spun as is no modifications to it. And then this one is the yarn spun by, by carting the two colors together. So this was again, another, another exercise. Jackie, I think so too, because, you know, I feel like going through all of these exercises and having to actually like say what you're doing, why you're doing it. And again, that's like this little word over here end use. Okay. So, um, everything that we had to do was end use driven. And so like, I think, Sorry, my, my brain jumps around a bit, but, but getting back to the, the tomato sauce analogy, um, if you know that you want to make tomato sauce, you know, and you want it to taste a certain way, right? Like you're going to have a lot better of an experience knowing that you want to make spaghetti for dinner and you have a really good recipe to go with it. If you just go into the kitchen and say, hmm, I want to, I want to eat spaghetti and you know, you don't have a recipe to follow and you never cooked it, you know, you may get spaghetti, you may get something else, you may get lasagna, you know, um, or, you know, you may not get spaghetti at all if you didn't even go to the grocery store thinking about the ingredients, right? So sometimes people just go and they shop and they see things that they like, like, ooh, pineapple, or ooh, you know, they have, um, you know, ham. But like, you're not thinking about, you're, you're not thinking about spaghetti until you get home. So the idea of starting with you know, an end use in mind that really helps drive the, the creativity um, portion of, of what I do. And so in a little bit, I'll explain one of these ideas that I, that I have about starting with a project first and having people watch me create um, a project from start to finish and kind of have one of these sessions where you can ask me questions. It'll be a live um, event. So I'll, I'll explain that in, in a bit. So... <laughs> Um, this over here was one of our dyeing exercises, and so we had to dye a gradient using the same color so that it was basically in 10% increments. Um, and again, starting with an end use, you had to always say, what was your intention for, for your yarns that you dyed? So as far as equipment requirements, um, you don't necessarily have to use a wheel for everything, but there are assignments like this one over here. Um, this specifically was a spindle spinning exercise. So you had to use a drop spindle and you had to have someone take a picture of you spinning on a drop spindle because they didn't want you cheating and using a wheel. Um, so you had to show proficiency in, in the tools, okay? So actually this year they were supposed to do a level one course but because of the virus, the, the, the courses are canceled. So I don't know if they're going to start a level one um, next year. It's up in Halliburton at Fleming College. So I'm not really sure how that's going to all go down. However, if there's anything that interests you as far as like what I'm showing you, I can do one-on-one -on -one lessons with you and teach you like pretty much everything that I learned. So if there's exercises that you would like to try, um, you know, I could, I could happily do that. Um, so as far as do you have to have a drum carter? No, you do have to have hand carters um, or at least access to them. And you do have to have, you know, 
some some equipment to, to, to make the exercises and the yarns you spin possible. Like for combing, you know, you could potentially prepare your fiber in class with what the teacher prepared, but you're so burnt at that point that, you know, you, you just don't. So you can you can maybe borrow from a fellow guild member or do something like that. But in, in general, um, you know, you're doing these exercises over the course of six years. So either people drop out and then they decide that they don't want to do it anymore. Um, or, you know, they get really excited and into it and then and then they buy the equipment. So it's it's kind of expensive for an American because you have to um, pay for Canadian hair. I'm going to switch back over here so we can have a little conversation. So, yeah, so you have to um, pay. I think when I when I did it, the tuition was 800. I don't know what it's going to be now, maybe like a thousand dollars figure for an American to go for the for the nine days. And that doesn't include lodging so that doesn't include the the room and board um it doesn't include like it it doesn't include the material fee you have you have to pay for that um maybe like it was 80 to 100 dollars for the materials like as far as like the wool and stuff like that and the handouts and so when i say handouts over here okay this is three years worth of notes but this what i was showing you is my homework this over here <laughs> is is my first three years of, of class notes and handouts. And because it's just the kind of person I am, I have little tabs and stuff like that over here so that I was able to organize what all, you know, of the, of the, um, the lessons were. So I'll move it a bit back so you can see, but yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. It's pretty intense. This was just three years of class notes, right? And then if I, move my camera it might take a little bit um here let me switch to my phone if it's still on and see if i can show you up above okay give me one second i wonder if it's still if it's still working great okay so i'm gonna go up to show you okay so over here that's like year two year three year four five and six Okay, so that, up over there, are all of my homework assignments. Now, um, oh wait, sorry, it's, it was blurry, my bad. It's hard to, like, be the photographer, the um, person talking, but you get the idea, right? There, there's a crap ton of binders. Now, if I bring you over here, and this is what I'm going to get to when I do um, the, the vendor sale. Oh, wait, over here, it's in this box. So this box here is my um, in-depth study. So that's what I needed to do in order to become um, a master spinner. And it's basically all of all of the samples that are in, in my book. So like all of these yarn samples that are in my book, those are all from my, my master spinner you know, work basically to, 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 to do my in-depth study. So I can, I can share that. There's more Glenn while I switch the, the cameras over. Um, but yeah, so it's it's definitely it's definitely intense as far as the quantity of work. Now, you know, it's pretty pretty intensive as far as the actual um, you know homework assignments, but then they hit you with like this crazy <laughs> project at the end, okay? Oh, yeah, Glenn is really cute, you guys, but look at this here. Check this out. Oh. That doesn't look like that doesn't look like moth damage. That looks like kitten damage. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was moth damage. Who knows? I don't see any casings or anything like that. Nope. Nope. That was kitten damage. Oh well. He's cute. So this over here was a, 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 a grease exercise and you had to spin in the grease and then wash it and then um, that's why I thought maybe it could have been like moth damage because moths like greasy, greasy fiber. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this up. This was just year one, but this is the project, right? So for the project, they don't tell you how long something is going to take. You kind of have to figure it out. So I made these gloves. And I started in December and I finished around the end of January and I started with raw fleece 
And the project, because it was a woolen year, was you had to start with raw wool. So over here, this is my homework project binder. So you can see how crazy this was. So I started off with sampling. All right, so I'm going to see. Hopefully you can see. <laughs> oh, Glenn's little foot. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this cat is just like everything to me. Um, so yeah, so over here is the sampling that I did. Um, and basically I was trying to figure out the thickness of the yarn needed to make these gloves. Okay. So after I did that, and again, I started in December because I was doing all my other homework assignments, right? Um, I, it ended in August. And so I came back, you know, in September. So I was doing all those other assignments you just saw in the binder. And then I decided, like, okay, I have to start my, my final. So then over here, I started with a greasy Cormo lock. And then I washed it. And then I selected this photograph. And I pulled all the colors from this picture and I dyed them. Okay. So over here, because it was an acid dye year, I was allowed to use acid dyes. But again, I had to start with a grease fleece. So all of the fiber that you see over here was basically um, like raw that raw, raw fleece that, that I dyed. And I have like all of my, my formulations. Um, so yeah, so I dyed all of those colors, you know, pulling each formula from the photograph. And then the other day when I was doing my live on Cornmo, I was saying, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was saying how I, I learned that flicking it was my favorite way of spinning it. And that's because of, of this exercise, right? So this really allowed me to see how Cormo, um, you know, works up and, and that I can get better results if I flick the locks first, as opposed to if I just go straight to, to carding them. So after doing all of that, right? So I, I um, dyed it and then I spun all these different yarns and then I went and I knitted it. So I could have just done the regular mittens, but I had to go a little bit overboard and I modified the pattern. So it actually has thrums in it. Um, and they're super warm. You know, they, I, I've worn them a couple of times, but see, they're starting to pill. So, you know, I probably wouldn't have spun them one, but I can't tell those might be the thrums that, that are coming. But I'm a spinner first, right? So I'm still learning about how yarns behave in, in, in knitted fabric, but, but these gloves are, are pretty awesome. I really, I really do love them. So yeah, so that's, that was year one. <laughs> so I do have more years um, if people are interested you know, potentially I could um, bring out the binders and, and do another live session to show you what year two entailed. That was more the, the worsted preparation, worsted um, drafting, you know, all, all the worsted stuff. Um, and then it was also, I think it was natural dyeing and there was, there was other assignments. It's, it's been a while, but like I said, I have all of the information here so I can easily go back and, and, and talk about it. Um, but yeah, this, I would say the first year took probably 200 to 250 hours. So it is a bit intense, you know, of a, of a time commitment. Um, but it's something that I feel was really worthwhile because while I did go in having gone to festivals and taking workshops and having like a pretty good, solid foundation of knowledge about spinning, I feel like having to spin for a project, spinning with intentionality, spinning to specification, spinning and getting assessed on my spinning. <laughs> More often than not, I had points taken off from my documentation and my presentation, um, which was a bit frustrating because, you know, you want to get assessed solely on your spinning, but if you're not communicating your ideas, then, you know, they're, they're, that could be problematic, right? So um, I understood you know, why, why that happened, but it was still a bit frustrating because, you know, you're getting graded on something that it's like what you're passionate about, you know, and what you're doing for, for fun. But now it's becoming work almost, you know, but, but it's a good kind of work because now, now you're being held to a really high standard 
to, to become better. So, um, yeah, so now that I've accrued all of this information, right, like what is the point of doing this? Well, different people go into this course for different reasons. So some are, you know, um, yarn vendors and fiber vendors, and they want to be able to give their customers, you know, good information. For me as a teacher, I had a dream that I would one day teach a fibers course at the college level. And there was no masters in fine arts and fibers um, local to me in Rochester. So I figured this was the next best thing that maybe I could parlay it into um, a teaching job at, at the college level. And so luckily when I finished um, as a high school educator, I reached out to a local college and I said, I know you have a fibers program. Is there any way that we could sort of make it um, you know, college credit for my students? And they're like, well, we don't actually have a fibers professor at the moment. So I was like, oh. <laughs> it did pay up and I tried it and I, I didn't like it but you know all the stuff that I learned from the spinning certificate I still I still use and and I'm, I'm very grateful for that for the opportunity to, to have gone through it um, so as far as now this knowledge is like up here but how do I get it to you right um, so so how how can you learn from me so I can share all of the stuff that that I've learned um, well, you can go to my website. So my website is www.alanawilcox.com, all one, all one word. And you can find my book there. Um, you can find, let's see, I have different types of workshop formats. So like this year, I was supposed to go to Convergence in Tennessee, so that's not happening. I was supposed to teach a twist um, in Quebec, and that's not happening. And so fingers crossed, who knows, but I'm slated to teach at Rhinebeck. And I was going to also teach at the gathering um, that was going to be in Massachusetts. So who knows if those live events are going to actually take place or not. But, you know, if they do, I'll, I'll be there. Um, and you can also go on my website and I have a couple of online workshops that are pretty much like student, like um, self-paced ones. So you can go at your own pace. Um, I can also do one-on-one -on -one lessons. So if there is a topic of interest to you, whether it's fiber preparation or like spinning techniques, things like that. Those are things I can do um, lessons for. But one thing that like I'm really excited about, I'm trying to think like, how can I get that interactive um, experience, kind of like what we're having now, where I can see people's comments and we can go back and forth and just have this like really organic learning experience. Um, so I kind of brainstormed this idea. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to be the final name, but I thought maybe um, asking a few people to, to call it Ask Alana about dot, dot, dot. And so what I kind of envisioned was having a series of sessions. So if you think of like watching um, Bob Ross paint, for example, right? Like what if you're watching him, but you could also ask him questions like, hey, Bob, like what does that brush do? Or, you know, what happens when you mix those colors together? So something similar to that, where I would pick a project and I'm going to go through it from beginning to end. And I want to set it up in a way where you can watch me through the whole creation process. So you can see how I think about designing and picking a project even before I get to the spinning stage. Like, how do I even decide what it is that I want to do? And what are some resources I use to put that all together? And then to have another session about like actually diving into the materials, right? So. Um, you know, how do I approach dyeing for a project? How do I approach selecting the best fiber for a project? So to have um, a session on that. And then as the project progresses, you know, maybe there's like a pause of like two weeks in between um, each session, but then you can ask me questions live. So it'll be in a, a Zoom conference type format, but you can, you can come and watch me teach. You can ask me questions because it, it'll, it'll be live and I'll be working on the project while answering um, questions and kind of um, talking to you and so that we can have this like interaction and, and back and forth. So what's different about it than say like a workshop is that there's no requirement on your part to do anything. So if you just want to watch me, you can. If I'm saying something that really intrigues you and you want to try to apply it to your own spinning practices and then come back in the following session and you know have a conversation about that, that's fine. You know, it's, it's just a very organic thing that I really want to have um, participant contribution and discourse. You know, like I want to have a conversation about um, the creation process. To me, I find it, it very fascinating to talk to other creatives 
and it's nice that since it's not a workshop, it's kind of open to all levels, right? And so you could be someone that never spun before. You could be an expert spinner. You could be somebody that is thinking about getting into spinning and you want to see, you know, how someone that is a spinner approaches it. So it's, it's just kind of this like idea that I have. Um, and so if you want to sign up for the first session, I have that available on, on my website as, as well. Um, so let's see. So I think that about covers it. Ooh, got two minutes over. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for joining me tonight. And if you weren't able to be live, then, you know, for, for coming back and watching, I do appreciate your time. And um, if there's interest for me to go over the level two binder and, and show you, you know, all those homework assignments and, and talk to you guys about that, um, I'm, I'm happy to. So I really appreciate again, you know, you, you, you coming out tonight and, and spending the night with me. And I look forward to seeing all of your work as, as fiber artists and, and fiber vendors and instructors in this wonderful wool and fiber arts page. And just because you guys stuck around, I got a little bit more Glenn for you. So hang on, let's switch the camera back so we can go. There we go. Okay, so this is Glenn's sleeping face, you guys, ready? This is a bonus. <laughs> I don't know how close I can get before he's gonna wake up. But there, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, right? So there's my little assistant. I can't believe he hung out with me this whole time. He's usually like eating the wool. And so to actually tempt him to hang out with me tonight, because I know people were asking me if Glenn was going to be here, I had this bag of fruits and I had his little, his little plastic, his little plastic um, container that, that he likes to sleep in. So thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me and Glenn. I hope you have a, a wonderful weekend and night and I look forward to um, having more of these live sessions with you guys. Take care.